Hi, welcome back to Tammy's Home Tips. So this is Ella and she is here to show you this beautiful barn door. And we're gonna learn how to install this barn door today. So stick around and we'll be right at it with Tammy's Home Tips. Stay tuned. There's several reasons why you might want to install a barn door in your home. In our case, my in-laws actually moved in recently and we want to provide them with some privacy. And also this little thing right here likes to go back to their area to eat her little brother's food as well. <laughs> so that's a problem because as you can see, she's already quite chubby. So we need to create a little barrier here so that doesn't happen all the time. So we're gonna put up this barn door and I'll walk you through it. Stay tuned. Okay, so first things first, you always wanna make sure that you're getting the right size barn door. We made that mistake to start off with. We bought the wrong size, it was too small. So let's go back and do it right. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this opening. And this is an extra wide opening and that's where our problem came in here. So right here, this is just under 37 inches. And really with the barn door, you want some overlap on both sides. So I'm gonna say about two inches on both sides. So the regular 36 inch door, that they have at the big box stores, they just don't work. So I actually wound up having to buy my barn door online. And this is the barn door that we bought. It's actually 42 inches wide. And that gives us that overlap on both sides. It did not come like this. I wish I had given a video or done a video on this when we were putting it together. It was all in pieces. Um, and then we sanded it and stained it. And I also st uh, sanded and stained this board that we're going to be using to put up on the, for the rod iron part. Um, but as you can see, it's all together now, it's ready to go, and it will fit nicely over that opening. Just know that you got to get the right size. So that's just the first place you want to start. Make sure you measure the opening for your doorway. Okay, so you can see here, these are some of the things that you're going to need. Um, you want to drill obviously and you want different bits because you might need to make some pilot holes or you might need a different type of screw head. So this is basically where you want to start. You also want to have your tape measure of course and you want to know where your studs are. So this is a stud finder. Now there is another way to look for studs, a more simple way and a very cheap way, but I'm going to go with stud finder and I will also share that method with you in a little bit. And of course, when you open up your box, you want to make sure that all of your pieces are there. Just kind of match it up with the list that comes in your box. And then finally, I purchased this separately. I wanted them to be able to easily grab it on both sides. A lot of them are just um, where you just grab it gently and pull, but it's like a little groove. And I didn't really want that. So I got the handle style and that's what I'll be installing, but that came separately. And uh, here's the guides that will go on the floor. Now I did also purchase a different guide and we'll see if we, if we need that or not. And of course, safety glasses are always good to have. Um, and then very important, you need to have your level. So I have that ready to go and you wanna have a pencil. So let's get into it. Next step is get your instructions. It's really important. I know they're hard to follow sometimes, but they are necessary. In this case, we wanna start with, according to the instructions, we wanna draw a horizontal line using the following formula, which is a half an inch at the bottom, an inch and a half at the top above the door. And so you will need to know the door height. So we're gonna measure the door height and basically add two inches to that to determine where we're gonna draw our horizontal line. Okay, let's do that next. Okay, so our door is actually 84 inches. It's always good to check because sometimes the, the measurements are a little bit off. But it is actually 84 inches, so we're just gonna add two inches to that, and that's gonna be 86 inches.
Okay, so I'm just using the level here to make sure that everything, of course, is level, but I'm also using it to draw my line across. Okay, now it's time for the stud finder. And I'm marking wherever all the lights light up, and I'm just putting a little mark right in the middle of it. And I just keep going down the wall. Okay, so I, w I did mention that I would also show you a way that you can use a non-stud finder, like a non-traditional stud finder, to find your studs. And it basically involves a magnet. And I know that I have a magnet on the edge of this level, so um, I'm gonna just use these because what happens is it'll go over the wall and when it feels a nail or a screw, it will at attract it. So that's basically how you find the studs. So I'm just basically gonna go like this, and then you can kind of feel it draw in when there's when there's a stud. So you have to just actually feel it. I can't really show you how you feel it, <laughs> but you have to feel it. And if you have the stronger the magnet, the better. It will give you a much better feedback than this is kind of a light magnet. I would prefer a stronger one myself. But if you have a really good magnet, that's the way to go. So I'm just making a longer line that I can see outside of the board. That way I know where all the studs are when I put my board up. So like I mentioned earlier, we are putting up this piece of wood. It's a one by four. Um, the reason why we were doing this is because we want to have that extra reinforcement in case there isn't a stud where we want to reinforce it at and it just provides that extra strength to the door since it isn't a light door. So we want to draw the line first and then what we'll do is we'll measure halfway on this board and then I overlap the line further than we need it so that I can know where that halfway point is and I can measure it and gauge it from there. So I made sure that the line was extra long just so I can do that. So now we're going to put this board up and then we'll proceed from there. Sadly I didn't record it here but I did drill a pilot hole first before I put the screw in and I do have the other side of the board resting on the top of the door. So you can get creative sometimes. Okay, so now that we have our board up at the top, we are gonna get our other hanging board ready to go, but we need to make sure that the door stops are in the right place. So I kind of placed the door where I want it to be, um, and then I know that it won't interfere with any other attachments. And I did the same on this end, and I brought the door back over here so that I can make sure on both ends that it's where I want it to stop. So. I want to make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. Okay, let's be honest here. There's no way I could put this heavy metal bar up by myself. <laughs> My husband, AKA the videographer, uh, had to jump in to help me with this part to hold up the other end. But I'm trying to just put a very simple guide hole that I will drill out all the way after I remove the bar, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, there is a tool that I left out that you're going to need, a ratchet set, because you're going to need to be able to put these in, and the type of, of equipment or hardware that I have requires it. So, um, and every, every set is different, so yours may be different than mine, but it seems like this is a logical approach. So you're going to need that, 
Now, what this is gonna happen next is I have pre-drilled and then I did a bigger hole. And now I'm gonna put this piece behind the metal and then I'm gonna put the screw with the washer in here on the other side. And I'm only gonna put that one in so that I can go to the other side and kind of get those holes lined out. And then I'll put all the rest in after that. So let's do it. In this case, I'm not using the anchors because we're not going directly into the drywall. So there you have it, we're halfway through. I have to do my halfway through dance. Woohoo! <laughs> Now it's time to measure for the hardware that we'll use to hang the door up with. In these particular instructions, it called for one and five eighths inch from the top and then three and a half inches from that point. So that's what I'm measuring here. I wanna make sure that it lines up perfectly because it makes a big difference on how it sits on the track and how it will slide. It has to be accurate. It's always a good idea to measure twice and drill once. So I wound up putting blue tape just to protect the wood as I was drilling and I did my measurements again here. Okay, so I have my socket wrench and oh yes, you will also need a wrench. So uh, this is just to hold it up underneath while you're trying to get it nice and tight. So we'll just get started. I'm not going to use it quite yet because I just need to get through here. Now it's time to put the anti-skip mechanism on the top. It's a very simple device, but it'll prevent the door from going off track. And you'll put two of these on the top. Okay, so now I have to determine where the stop is gonna be so that I can tighten that part of it down. So I'm just checking. And that just prevents it from going too far and then, you know, causing lots of havoc. And the reason why that's important is because of this. <laughs> I have a handle sticking out on the other side. Normally that wouldn't be a big deal because a lot of them are flush or go right into the door. But this one, I wanted it to be a handle on both sides to be easy to grab onto. So I wanna make sure I have clearance on both sides without actually uh, hitting the wall on the other side or on the back side here. So I'm just trying to make sure of my placements for the stoppers before I go any further and that's what I just did. Okay, so I'm just measuring for the handle now. The instructions said eight inches center to center. 
So I'm just following the diagram's instructions. So you never want to take it for granted that there's just nothing behind the door. Make sure that there's nothing behind the door before you drill a hole into the drywall on the other side. Okay, so this is the guide. Okay, now, now we just have to put the track in. And one thing I wanna mention is you wanna consider what type of floor you have wherever you put the track in. It could be very thin and you have concrete below that or it could be thicker. Um, but whatever the situation is, consider that because it, it'll make a difference on the size of the screw that you use. So this one's a little bit shorter because this is not that thick and there is concrete up underneath. So I just wanted to mention that really quick. Voila! Okay, so there you have it. We're able to install our new barn door and we're really thrilled with the outcome. We feel like it really serves the purpose that we were looking for and we love it. I love the wood grain stain and this one I did stain. I had another project I did not stain but this one I wanted to stain and I think it came out really well and uh, I'm just really happy with the outcome. So, if you would like to follow me for more home projects like this, please follow my channel, subscribe, and like, and I'll have more episodes for you coming up from Candy's Home Tips. Have a great day.